Hi and welcome to Dean Park. I'm Dave Watson and I'm the designer and the creator of the layout. I've got another spotlight video for you today and in this I look at a new addition to the layout. I look at the background to the real local. I then go and look at the the actual model in detail before giving you my verdict at the end. And I'll throw some running shots of the loco and the layout in there as well. Please remember to click on the like icon and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. You might want to share the video as well, the icons below. At the bottom right hand side of the screen there's a small Dean Park icon. If you click on that it'll take you to my channel page where you'll be able to access all of the videos that I've uploaded thus far. If you want to stay in touch in between videos there's my Dean Park Station closed Facebook group, so you might want to join that as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any comments, get in touch. Cheers. Before I look at the actual Kernow model, I'd like to look at the actual prototype. This was built in 1965 at Crew Works and it was numbered 1657 and designated to the Landor Depot in Swansea. And it stayed there until its transfer to the Old Oak Common in May 1970. It should have been renumbered 47073, but this never happened as it went straight into the Class 474 classification when in 1974 it received its electric train heating and the number 47537 instead. Its naming to Sir Gwynedd, County of Gwynedd, took place at a naming ceremony on the 1st of November 1982. It was repainted into large logo livery in May 1986 and the following year it returned to the western region at Bristol Bath Road. Under sectorisation it was allocated to the parcel sector and when Rail Express Systems pulled out of Bristol Bath Road in 1991, it moved to Crew Diesel. In November 1992, it got its overhaul at Doncaster Works, where it received extended fuel tanks and the Rail Express Systems livery, and also the loss of its name. January 1994 saw it become 47772, where it received its TDM jumper cables for use on PCV coaches. Privatisation of Rail Express saw it come under the control of EWS, but as the Class 67s came along, along with the ending of the Royal Mail contract, it was stored in January 2004, before finally being withdrawn in August 2007. Put up for sale, it was purchased by West Coast Railway. Another decade of storage awaited, but in late 2017, it was reactivated for charter trains and repainted into the West Coast Maroon livery, getting a new nameplate Carnforth TMD. At this point I'd like to thank Laura McWilliams. She very kindly provided some of the information here which has allowed me to give you a thorough background into the real locomotive. So thanks for that Laura. If you want to check out Laura's channel the link to that is at the top of the screen. The model under the spotlight this week is Backman's newly released K1 
Kerner Model Rail Centre exclusive is a Class 47, number 47537, and it's named Sir Gwynedd, County of Gwynedd, and it's in the BR Blue large logo livery with heavy weathering. It's limited to 504 pieces, and this one is certificate number 59 of 504. Kernow Model Rail Centre has developed quite a reputation for bringing niche and unusual models to market. Luckily for me, this has resulted in a good few diesel locomotives and rolling stock that has found a good home at Dean Park. Kernow have tended to focus on the region at which they're based, which is down in the south west and western region. However, they've also looked after the Scottish modellers with the Backman Mark II Scotrail coaches and more recently a former Scotrail Blue Stripe Class 47.7 with a heavy weathered appearance. Whilst not strictly for use on the Scotrail region with its NSE flashes, it was still appealing to me. The review of that model was done previously and the link to that is at the top of the screen. This leads me nicely onto their latest release, the Backman Class 47 sporting this unique weathered finish. The weathering replicated on this model really breaks new ground with a level of dilapidation taken to new heights. The distressed paintwork has been copied from photographs of the loco as it was in the early 1990s. The level of deterioration on the rail blue is such that the grey primer is visible. On the model this has been applied to the top of the blue, whereas in real life obviously the primer would have been underneath the blue. However, you can't really tell that it's been applied after because it's very smooth and level finish of the paint, so really Backman have done a cracking job with this. The rail blue also has a faded appearance which is both well applied and adds to the realism and it's all kind of toned down with this subtle grimy finish as well along the sides and the under frames. Moving round to the yellow ends you've got a faded bleach appearance and heavy chipping and weathering of the paint including the black window surround that were really prone to wear during general use. Being at the end of the locomotive more damage would have occurred to the paint here I suppose in respect it's just like your car, where the bonnet of your car is more prone to stone chips and road grime than other parts of the bodywork. The black windscreens would also be subjected to the washing of the windscreens usually done by a brush and a bucket of soapy water. All this is clearly taking its toll on the paint finish. I also like the look of the windscreen wiper marks on the glazing. This gives a, an added realism to an in-service look. There is a detail pack with this locomotive which can be fit to the buffer beam. This also has been weathered, so that's really a thoughtful touch so that when you're fitting the pipework, it matches in with the, the weathered appearance of the loco. The model itself is a standard Backman Class 47, so the level of detail is good with extra fitted parts at, at the end, such as the grab rails and the handrails, lamp irons, windscreen wipers, roof aerial, and a fine roof grill on the uh, number one end of the, the roof. The quality of application to this finish is back to Backman's usual standards. I've had a few Backman products where the finish has, shall we say, come up a little short, so I'm glad that the model is back to where I'd expect to be for this value of model. That brings me on to the price. Kernow's limited editions are always a little bit more expensive than the run of the mill release. For example, when the Class 47 was £135 retail price, which was back in 2018, the Kerner models were sitting at about 165. You have to accept this um, as they're making a limited run and it's more costly for Kernow. They've had to carry all the research on the particular model as well. So, you know, you're paying for a, a, an exclusive model, so you don't mind paying that little bit extra. So Gwynedd was on pre-order for 169.95, but when released, the price had shot up to 189.95. Luckily, I got mine for the original price and it's very good of Kernow to honour those who had pre-ordered the model at the lower price. However, bearing in mind that the tooling from Backman isn't new, there's not been any significant change to the model um, in terms of detail, there's not been any significant change in the currency rates, the import taxes and the production costs in the last six months, I find it hard to justify £190 for a model of this age and technology. The Backman 47 is a very good model. I wouldn't have over two dozen at Dean Park if it wasn't but it's not exactly bristling with new technology. The mechanism hasn't been upgraded in the time that I've been aware of the model, that's around about 10 years. There's no cab detail worth a mention, 
and there's no increased lighting functions that are now being seen on diesel locomotives from other manufacturers. So I'm really starting to question the pricing structure here. I'm not being critical of Care now, they've got to make their profit and get money back from the research and development that they've done on the model. But I really fear for their excellent limited edition announcements if this is the kind of prices Backman are demanding. With this in mind, I'll ask you this question. Have we seen one of the last limited edition Backman 47s from Kernow Model Rail Centre? Just before I go, it's time for me to give my verdict on this model. Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Or should you just go ahead and buy it? Well, in this case, I'm going to say I think you should consider it. If you're from the southwestern western region, modelling the 1990s, then this model is right up your street. However, you may be put off by the increased asking price. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have, remember to click on the like icon and to share the video. I look forward to hearing from you with regard to your comments about this model. Cheers just now.